Hello everyone, Jolene here from Bookworm Adventure Girl. I hope that you are all well. As most of you know, I live in Canada and I like to highlight Canadian literature. And I also like to follow a couple of the Canadian literary awards and competitions. One of them is Canada Reads and they released their long list for this year's Canada Reads uh, two days ago. So I thought I would go over the long list with you and predict the books that I think or that I hope will make the short list. If you are new to Canada Reads, it is an annual book competition that CBC hosts and it is basically a battle of the books to find the one book that all Canadians should read. Every year there is a different theme. This year the theme is to reflect on community and who we are in the world we live in. The shortlist is made up of five books um, written by Canadians and they are defended by actors or musicians, athletes, different artists. And then over four days in March, the defenders debate why the book they are defending should be the winner. And each day one book is voted out of the competition, kind of like survivor style, um, until one book remains. The competition is televised and it's online. Uh, Pre-COVID they had an audience, but obviously now it's done without one. And the debates are hosted by Ali Hassan, who just does a fantastic job. Um, I will leave a link to videos below where I was part of a group who had the opportunity to interview Ali and ask questions about the competition. Um, so for the past couple of years, ever basically ever since there has been no audience, um, this group hosted by Canada Reads American Style, um, we've met to discuss the debates and we had the opportunity to have um, a discussion with some of the defenders as well. Last year, our group was even mentioned on the show, <laughs> which was really cool and very exciting. So I will leave a link to the playlist in the description box below and I will also leave links to Canada Reads American Styles um, that links. They have a YouTube channel, a podcast, Instagram and things like that. So let's take a look at the 15 books that are on the long list. I have read four of the long listed books and I have three others on my TBR pile. Um, I put the books into five groups and then I will choose one book from each group um, that I think will make it to the short list, um, which will be announced on January the 26th, and we will be able to see if I get any correct. So for the first group, I put these three books together because uh, they are all Indigenous authors and Indigenous stories. The first is a memoir that I read in November last year, Life in the City of Dirty Water, by Clayton Thomas Mueller. This memoir started off so good. Um, the author shares his memories of his childhood and how intergenerational trauma has affected him and his family. It's quite heartbreaking. Um, and then once the book became about his activism, uh, which I think is a really important part of his story, uh, it, it just started feeling very disjointed to me. Uh, however, it is a book worth reading. Uh, next in this group is a debut novel called All the Quiet Places by Brian Thomas Isaac. And this has so many things that I love. It is a coming of age story. The narrator is a six year old indigenous boy and it follows how he grows up in a white world and the struggles that he and his own family has in keeping their culture and traditions uh, alive. And then the last book in this group is Five Little Indians by Michelle Good. And this novel was in my top 20 books of 2020. I absolutely loved it. It's a fiction novel, but I would say very accurate. It is an account of five people who survive residential school and it is about how they try and survive after they leave the residential school. All of them take very different paths and it's heartbreaking and inspiring and it's very well written. Um, so for the shortlist, the book that I am choosing and that I would like to see is Five Little Indians by Michelle Good. Um, I had hoped to see it as part of Canada Reads last year, 
So when I saw it on this year's list, I was very happy about that. And I'm really hoping that it makes it to the short list. The next grouping um, are all written by black authors. And the first is a memoir called From My Mother's Back by Najoki Wayne. I hope I'm saying that name correctly. Um, this is a story of immigration. It's about Wayne's childhood in Kenya and her life now as a professor at the University of Toronto. Up next is Washington Black by Essie Adugian. Um, I read this book in 2020. It's a Giller Prize winner, and I think it was long listed for the Booker Prize as well. Um, it's received a lot of well-deserved attention. This uh, story begins when Washington Black, or Wash as he's called, is only 11 years old and he's grown up on a sugar plantation and has the opportunity to become a manservant. So the story follows Wash, uh, a surprising friendship and the life that opens up for him. And this is a really good read. The last book in this group is Book of Wings by Tahida Tanya Evanson. And this has been on my shelf for a while and I've been wanting to read it. Um, this is like a travel memoir, which uh, follows Tahida and her lover from Canada, the US, the Caribbean, uh, and Europe, and it's how their relationship changes and what Tahida learns about herself. It's also like a really quick uh, book. It comes in at like about 180 pages. Um, so the book that I'm choosing from this group is Book of Wings by Tahida Tanya Evanson. I'm not really sure my exact reasoning for this other than Washington Black has already received, you know, many accolades. And I think that this is probably the most unique book of the three. Um, the next three books I put together because two of them are uh, short story collections. And when I was reading up about the nonfiction that's part of this group, uh, it had several stories in it as well. So actually, let's start with a nonfiction book, which is called Driven, The Secret Lives of Taxi Drivers by Marcello Di Sintio. Um, I had not heard of this book, and when I read up on it, it just sounded really interesting. The author has interviewed uh, North American taxi drivers, and in this book talks about the dynamics of the relationships between the drivers and the people they are driving. Um, he says that taxis transcend everyday barriers of class and race. Um, so, you know, people are together who would not normally um, find themselves in the same place, um, whether it's for five minutes or half an hour. And sometimes they talk, often there's silence. I just, I love the concept of this one. Uh, next up is the short story collection called We Two Alone by Jack Wang. Um, the theme of this collection is about the Chinese immigrant experience. Uh, now, the stories are not all about people immigrating to Canada, but there are stories about uh, different people from various educational backgrounds, and we get a glimpse of their lives and the diversity of the Chinese experience around the world. And to finish up this trio of books is the short story collection Dominoes at the Crossroads uh, by Kai Kello. And this collection, again, it has been on my list and I really want to read it. Um, I first became aware of Kai Kello when this book was long listed for the Giller, uh, I think a couple of years ago now. Um, what attracts me to this collection the most are the themes that are included. So there are coming of age stories um, and themes of race and class. So I look really, I look forward to reading this. Um, the book that I am predicting will be in the short list is Driven, The Secret Lives of Taxi Drivers by Marcello Di Sentio. I hope I'm saying that name correctly too. So I want to read all of the books, but I just think that this one, um, it sounds the most unique to me and it would be something I think most people can relate to um, if they've ever taken a taxi. The fourth group of books I put together um, because they were novels that seemed to have a more specific focus. 
when I was learning about them, it felt almost like they had a magnifying glass on a specific theme or a group of people. Uh, first up, I will talk about What Strange Paradise by Omar el uh, This is the 2021 Giller Prize winner, and I've talked about it a couple of times already on my channel. And it tells the story of a young boy who is the only survivor of a ship carrying refugees that has capsized. This story is told in alternating chapters called Before and After. And the before chapters uh, tell the story of how Amir, the boy, um, ends up in the boat. And after is the story of how he survives. Next is uh, Scarborough by Catherine Hernandez, another book that's been on my shelf for a while uh, that I really want to read. And I actually um, thought that this book had already been long listed before, uh, but I, I could be wrong about that. So this novel takes a close look at a neighborhood in Scarborough. Um, for those of you who don't know, Scarborough is just uh, east of Toronto. And it looks at themes of poverty, education, crime, and drugs, and the impact it has on the many diverse uh, characters that make up this story. And then third is called The Spoon Stealer by Leslie Crew. And I've only read one other Leslie Crew book, but it was several years ago. Uh, this one is more recent. Um, it was published, I think, in 2020. And this story is about Emmeline, who is from Nova Scotia. And after the war, she goes to England to make a life for herself. Uh, she has a dog named Vera. She joins a writing group and she steals spoons. And when Emmeline inherits the farm she grew up on, she has to return home to and face her past. And the themes in this book are grief, family, and it also, although maybe not from what I've just described, um, but I think that it's supposed to have, you know, some humor in it. And the book that I'm choosing from this group is Scarborough by Catherine Hernandez. Um, I would love to see this in the short list. The final group is basically, uh, not gonna lie, just the last three books. Um, but I also think that they are three books that maybe have uh, some kind of surreal or bizarre element to them. Uh, first up is the debut novel Satellite Love by Jenki Ferguson, uh, who, for those of you who don't know, uh, is the son of Canadian author Will Ferguson. Uh, this story takes place in Japan in 1999. The protagonist is a uh, 16-year-old Anna, and she looks to the stars to find solace and comfort in her life. And one day she calls LEO, uh, which stands for Low Earth Orbit Satellite, uh, down to Earth. And this book is about imagination and connection. Next is Everyone Knows Your Mother is a Witch by Rivka Gelchin. Uh, this story takes place in Germany in 1618 when a plague is spreading. And a widow named Katharina, I think it's Katarina, uh, makes herbal remedies and is considered a witch. And this story actually draws from real historical documents. Um, and when Katarina is accused of making someone ill, uh, it's, it sends the entire neighborhood into a frenzy. <laughs> this is just another book that sounds very imaginative. And then the last book in this group uh, and on the long list is Velvet Was the Night by Silvia Marino Garcia. I've seen a couple of booktubers talk about this book and I think that the cover is stunning. Uh, if you've seen or read the book Mexican Gothic, this is, this is from the same author. So this story takes place uh, in the 1970s in Mexico City. The protagonist, who I think is named Mate, uh, her neighbor goes missing and Mate starts searching for her. And someone else is also searching for her. And it's an eccentric criminal named Elvis. Um, and as he searches for this neighbor, he becomes obsessed with Mate. Uh, so this thriller seems like it also, you know, it has the most action in it from the rest of the books. My choice from these three novels was for me between Satellite Love and Velvet Was the Night. Um, but I think for the shortlist, I am going to choose Velvet Was the Night by Silvia Moreno Garcia. So the five books that I'm predicting to make this list um, are Five Little Indians by Michelle Good, 
Book of Wings by Tahida Tanya Evanson. Driven, The Secret Lives of Taxi Drivers by Marcella D. Cintio. Uh, Scarborough by Catherine Hernandez. And Velvet Was the Night by Sylvia Marino Garcia. The shortlist is going to be announced on January 26th, so that's not a lot of time from now, um, but I'm going to try and read the books that I do have that I haven't already read um, from the long list. And then, you know, once the shortlist comes out, I will make sure that I have read all of those and predict a winner before um, the debates, which are on, uh, the debates are March 28th to the 31st. I will leave all of the links for Canada Reads below. Um, I always say that any of the long list books are worth reading. Um, oftentimes in the past, there have been hidden gems in the long list, you know, that don't make it to the short list. And every year I am introduced to new authors that, you know, I never would have uh, known about otherwise. Please let me know if you have read any of these books, uh, if you want to read any of these books. Uh, what five books would you put on the short list um, if you were to do your predictions? I look forward to chatting with you in the comments. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and don't forget to make every day an adventure. Mm -hmm.